Okay, time to start. Hi everyone, I'm Kerstin. I'm a developer at Xing. Our corporate design department loves to put the huge logos on slides, while everyone else in the company is more busy building a social networking site for business professionals. It's based on Ruby on Rails and Perl. And I would like to share with you why we have decided to use OEmbed and what we have learned from implementing our own OEmbed consumer. Oh, and by the way, we're hiring. <laughs> so, when I've started to prepare this talk, I typed the search term boring links into DuckDuckGo and I've ended up on the world's most boring website.com. And indeed, it looks pretty boring, lots of text, some links in between, and there is only one way to interact with this website. The user can click a link and that actually takes the user away from the site. So when I started to work on Xing.com, I was glad to see it looks a bit different because it was able to embed third-party content, for example, YouTube videos. Looks much more appealing than a boring link and users can interact with that content, for example, watch the video without ever leaving our site. Also, it allows us to offer some video functionality without us having to deal with video hosting, video streaming, video encoding, and all those uh, things that can possibly go wrong with videos. So yes, we had some automated embedding mechanism that was able to turn URLs into embedded representations of the content, embedded videos, for example. Unfortunately, the implementation was not very exciting. It was some weird flavor of screen scraping. And I guess most of you have tried this in one way or another at least once. So you know that this can easily become a maintenance nightmare. Provider-specific APIs are much more reliable, but still you need additional effort for each additional provider you want to support on your site. So if you want to give your users a choice where to host their videos or which content to share on your site, this can easily add up to quite some effort, <coughs> mainly because all those provider-specific APIs are totally different. It doesn't add up to that much effort if they're not that different or even the same. And this is why we have decided to look into OEmbed. OEmbed is an open web standard for third-party media embedding. There's already quite a number of providers out there. All those media providers offer an OEmbed API. So you can embed photos and videos, but also code snippets, sound snippets, or product descriptions through OEmbed. How does an OEmbed request look like? Basically, it's an HTTP request to the API endpoint of the media provider. In this example, it's YouTube. And it contains the URL of the resource you want to embed, that is the video, the format you prefer, either JSON or XML, and some size limits in order to make sure that the response you receive is suitable for the space you have available on your site. This is always not restful at all, which is also one of the main criticism OEmbed receives. The OEmbed authors decided to go for this approach um, because they assume that the code changes you need to turn an existing web application into an OEmbed consumer are less deep compared to a truly restful approach. Anyway, the consumer needs to know the API endpoint of the provider. If it doesn't do so in advance, it can use a feature named discovery. The consumer makes a request to fetch the HTML representation of the resource. And in the HTML header, 
the provider has given some information how to make an OMBAT request to this provider for this particular resource. So the consumer can follow up with the OMBAT request and receive the embedding information. The downside is obvious, the consumer needs to make two requests, but it enables this consumer to embed um, resources, content from a provider it has never heard of before. This is an example response from YouTube. An OMBED response is a set of metadata describing how to embed the media resource, in this case the video. And every OMBED response has a field type. In case of YouTube, not surprisingly, the type is video. And every response of type video contains a field HTML, which is a ready-to-use HTML snippet you can embed into your site. In case of YouTube, this is an iframe. That's pretty common, but it doesn't have to be an iframe. Another example from Flickr. The type is photo here. Responses of type photo normally do not have this HTML field, but they always do have a field URL, which gives you a URL that is ready to be used inside an HTML image tag. It's normally different from the one you used in your request. For example, it has to respect the size limits you have given in your request. Last not least, a response of type link. This basically tells the consumer that there is nothing it can embed and that it should display a link instead. A common mistake is to assume that this response contains a field URL. According to the specs, it doesn't have to. So the consumer is expected to link to the URL it used in the request. Actually, you can get this response from Flickr if you request Flickr with a very strict size limit. If they do not have a, an image file that is small enough to suit your needs, Flickr responds with a response of type link. That's inconsistent across providers. Many other providers choose to return a 404 instead. If you don't like to request all those different provider API endpoints directly, you can go through some gateway. Gateways collect data from media providers, from OMBED providers, as well as other media providers. And they expose this data through one single OMBED API endpoint. Embedly is a very common, very common service for that. There is also a CPAN module you can use to send requests to this uh, service. There used to be uEmbed, it's now also part of Embedly. A new service, reEmbedMe, it's still an alpha and actually I do not know very much about it. And last but not least, there is noEmbed.com, which was already presented on one of the recent YAPCNA conferences. The noEmbed gateway is written in Perl. <coughs> Actually, it's a Plaque application, it's free software, and it adds some functionality. For example, it ensures that every response you get contains certain fields. We've already seen that a response you get from Flickr normally does not contain an HTML field. No embed adds this field for you so that your consumer can rely on receiving those fields. Another functionality no embed adds is JSP. If you want to build a client side consumer, then you are hit by the same origin policy. Actually, you need to make cross domain AJAX requests. And one way to solve this is to use JSP, which is not part of the OMBED specs. Some OMBED providers offer it anyway. But if, you're, if you send your request through the no embed gateway, you always have it available. How to build your own consumer? 
One way to do it is to use this CPAN module. For example, it's used by FOSWIKI. Or you can build it from scratch. Actually, that's what we did at Xing. It's pretty easy to do, and if you are already running a larger web application, then you probably have some mechanism in place to make HTTP requests to other parties, and you can as well reuse that for making your own web requests. Some points you may want to think of. Your consumer should most definitely be able to deal with different response types even if you don't expect to deal with different types. As we've already seen, Flickr might send you a response of type link, even though you may expect a response of type photo. Security is also a big issue here. You receive some HTML snippet from some third party, and if you use discovery, you do not even know that party and you receive this HTML snippet and display it to your users. So that creates a huge cross-site scripting vulnerability. The OMED authors recommend to load this HTML into an iframe hosted on a different domain in order to make sure that a malicious provider is not able to steal any session data. Actually, I haven't seen this approach in the wild. A very common approach is to maintain your own whitelist of trustworthy providers and disable discovery completely. SSL gave us a major headache. Our site is running completely on HTTPS. So if we embed some iframe, we need to make sure that this iframe loads using SSL2. If it doesn't, our users will get mixed content warnings, or if they are using modern browsers, the request will be blocked completely. So how can you tell the provider that you need the iframe to load using SSL? The OMBED specs are silent about it, for some providers, actually, it's sufficient to make the OMBED request using HTTPS instead of HTTP. Some other providers have custom parameters uh, for the very same goal. Unfortunately, very many providers, even those that normally offer HTTPS on their websites, do not offer any possibility to enforce that the iframe loads uh, using SSL, which unfortunately means that we cannot support those providers on our site. Yeah, that's already my conclusion. So the OMBED specs are from 2008. So yes, they could use a rebrush. Think of JSONP, think of how to handle different user agents. Also, there are many inconsistencies between different providers out there. But nevertheless, it's very, very easy to implement an OMBED consumer. It really keeps your maintenance effort low while at the same time allowing you to support a larger number of providers. So in my opinion, there's really no excuse anymore to display boring text links. You can go for the embedded content. So don't take this exit unless you really want to go to Boring in Oregon. Yeah, that's it. Try it out. Build your own consumer. It's really easy. Thanks for listening. I guess we have enough time for questions or comments. Um, I'm not aware of any problems we had with Internet Explorer. <laughs> Maybe because my uh, 
front end uh, colleagues did such an awesome job. But uh, yes, so what you get back is, uh, yeah, that was the slide in the very beginning yeah. with the um, light box. And the content of the light box is basically what you get, uh, what you get back. And uh, you do not have to load it into an iframe, you can do so. Um, and also what you are receiving is not necessarily an iframe. It is in case of uh, YouTube, what we see here. But you may as well receive an HTML snippet that is not an iframe at all. In case of YouTube, actually, you can even enforce that. They have a custom parameter. Um, if you want to avoid the iframe, uh, you can do so. But that is not part of the OMBED spec. That's a custom YouTube thing. No, I haven't. Because it's written in Paul and mm -hmm. I tried to contact them. Why are we not, it's on GitHub, but it's not released on CPAD. And I tried to get in contact with them, but did not receive any response. Yeah, I noticed the same. No embed is on GitHub. It's available as free software, but it's not on CPAD. But I didn't talk to those guys directly. I want to become a provider of more of it. Is there a point of using how to discover it and are there any big consumers which you can make a way to go on to us? Does anybody use it or as you said, the way of the consumer? Well, the question was about consumers. So there is a number of consumers, different social networks, uh, like for example, Diaspora, Friendica, StatusNet, and so on. Facebook, actually, I don't think they use it. There is a lot of rumor on the web um, where people claim, yes, Facebook is using OMBED, but I was searching for it and I couldn't find any reliable resource confirming that. So I think people are just guessing that Facebook is using it. Um, but I don't know. Ah, discovery was the other part of the question. So as a provider, if you are planning to become an OMB provider, you don't lose anything by offering uh, discovery. For the consumers, that might be a security risk, but as a provider, you can easily do so and it will not do any harm to you. Um, anyway, you may need to put some effort into being accepted by the consumers. Because as I said, many consumers maintain a wide list of providers they trust and if you don't make it onto that list you will not show up with your content so in some cases that can be pretty easy for example in WordPress you can write write a simple plugin that's a one-liner um, and every WordPress instance that installs this plugin can then embed your content of course you would prefer to make it to the WordPress core so that every instance embeds your content out of the box, um, yeah, and then probably you would have to write a patch and hope that it gets accepted. Same for all the other open source softwares that uh, use OMBED like Diaspora, Fremiker, Elk, and so on. More questions? Comments? Okay, thank you very much.